obviously certain events in the development of any technology that are uh, you know transformative and really change the the landscape dramatically and clearly in in this space uh, you know Google Earth has been one of the things that has done that and uh, our, our next speaker Michael Jones uh, has been you know instrumental in making that happen uh, he's the original patent holder uh, uh, on Google Earth uh, before that he was with organizations like uh, Keyhole of course which uh, and Intrinsic Graphics and SGI, so he has a very long history uh, in uh, graphical visual visualization. Uh, today, uh, Michael is the uh, Chief Technology uh, Advocate uh, for Google, so uh, we are really happy that uh, he's been able to, to come here. Uh, he's been a, an outstanding speaker at these conferences now for three years, I think. Uh, and uh, please just give a very warm welcome for Michael T. Jones uh, of Google. Thank you. Wow, uh, well, that's quite a build up. Um, wow, I can't wait. To, I'm excited to talk to you. I, I was thinking about what, what to talk about. Uh, I guess some people uh, do speeches where they think ahead, really. Uh, I, I don't tend to work that way. Um, so what I did was I looked at the things I had talked about for the last two years uh, to, to see what I already said. And I already said everything. So um, I, I'm going to talk about something different now because I already said all the other stuff. So uh, uh, basically I'm going to talk to you about the power of the GOL. Uh, in the past I've talked about a vision that I held that uh, my coworkers uh, shared that we were trying to build something we thought would be really valuable. Um, then I talked about, I guess last year, kind of like, oh, I think it's working. Let's keep doing this. And uh, I think it's worked. And so, I mean, I don't mean it's worked for Google. I mean, it's worked for all of us in, in many ways. And so uh, the, the idea of, of the web and geography, GIS, interoperability, um, consumers, and geospatial information, all those things together, that's worked. And, and most of us are here because of that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the power that has been brought to bear because of that success and some of the things we might want to do to harness that in the future. Now, first, I want to, uh, and the, w the way I, if you don't know me, the way I explain things is just the way I think of them. And that isn't the way some people think of them, so just forgive me if it seems strange. This is a lizard. Do you have those in Canada? No? No? Oh, you have lizards? Okay. So, this is a, uh, a really relatively small lizard. And this is a big lizard. And the, the idea is that, uh, Sometimes size matters, that there's a, there's a power in scale. That's very important. It's a, I got to thinking of that because Ryan and I saw these uh, grizzly bears on top of the, uh, the mountain up there, and uh, they were bigger. And I thought, I called my wife and said, oh, they're so big, you can't believe how big they were. She says, I've seen them before. And I said, well, I hadn't. They're really big. So anyway, um, uh, bigness uh, can, be, uh, can turn a normal, normal thing into a frightening thing as in the case of uh, you know, Japanese uh, science fiction movies of the 1950s. Or, it, or maybe uh, it can make a, uh, something really valuable. You know, a garden hose wouldn't do a job in a fire, but uh, a big fire engine and a big fire hose would. So sometimes you need big to solve a problem. Sometimes you need small to solve a problem. Sometimes things that are unnaturally big are, are themselves a problem. So anyway, big's important. So I want to talk you through some things about big that maybe you haven't thought about lately. So uh, in the last 10 years, okay, one billion people have gone online. And it's only six and a half billion people. Okay, so that's one in six. So that's, something, that's, a, that's a lot for some people to just start doing that they ever did before. That's only 10 years. Okay, that's not 50 years, it's 10 years. About a billion searches are done at Google every day. If you combine Google web searches and uh, blogger type, or blog, blog searches, about a billion searches. So it, it's not that everybody online does one search every day, like a vitamin or something. It's that, you know, some people do a lot of searching, some people don't do any searching at all. Some people do a lot of searching, but not with Google, right? All kinds of people. But um, the aggregate number corresponds to about one per person. So a, a sort of entire human race aggregate behavior now is that every day is a day I search. Whereas 10 years ago, that was true for zero people. Well, it was true for librarians, 
right? It was true for high school students mastering their reader's guide to periodical literature. You know, it was, it was, it was true for, you know, Esri clients looking at maps. You know, it, it's true for, for a certain set of people, for people in the army and lots of people, but, but n not really, not for everybody. Okay, we've got 400 million Google Earth users. Every time I come, I mention a bigger number, it's because it's the real number. That's a lot of people. That's more than live in the United States. So uh, I, I, I mention that to politicians now when they come by. I said, well, you know, our constituency is bigger than yours. You know, uh, how are you? <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, there are about 250 million people actively involved in a social networking site, like Facebook or MySpace, that kind of thing. Or maybe not those kind, but maybe like the, uh, you know, retired seafarers of the Alaska salmon fishing industry website, where they can swap stories about how big the fish was and stuff like that. You know, it's, but it's 250 million people. That's, that's a lot. That's a fourth of the people online. So that's a big number. If somebody told you that it was only lonely teenagers, they were misinformed. Still, not so big a deal on, on, on like Google Earth and things because there's 80 billion emails and instant messages sent every day. Okay, now obviously, a large percent of those are for Viagra. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but still, there's only, there's, only t <laughs> there's only a billion people online. Okay, so the ones that aren't online aren't sending emails. Or, okay, so there's, there's, there's some, prop, some behavior like one a day is good enough for searching but 80 a day is a good number for talking to people using a computer as a proxy. And that's in 10 years. It's a very big thing to think about. I don't want you to sell you email software. I want you to think about people's behavior has changed in a decade in a dramatic and very unusual and unnatural way. It's not natural to type, you know, really, especially with the keyboard the way it's laid out. <laughs> it's very, very unnatural. But it's not, not, not natural to do the instant messaging on the phone. Although there was this guy like in Japan who had modified his finger, he had the flesh cut away so he had a little bone so he could win the speed instant messaging competition, you know? But, so, so I, actually I like that, I mean, it, I don't like it, it's, it's creepy, but, but it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of a, it's not kind of like an accelerated evolution, right? He, he knew where he wanted to get to and he wasn't going to wait for like his great-great-grandchildren to get there, right? No, he, was, he was going there now, so I, I like that, it's pretty cool. So, um, now, there are 10 billion YouTube videos streamed out of Google every month in the U.S., okay, just U.S. domains. So that's a very big number as well. Now, I cheated because I get 30 extra days instead of one day, right? So it's a bigger, it's not as big as the other numbers, but 10 billion is a big number too. So, so these are things I just wanted to mention. These aren't about the GeoWeb yet, really, but I want to give you a sense of the scale. You know, Google Earth, it's pretty meager. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, maybe it's almost twice as much as Facebook and MySpace and stuff like that, but um, it's pretty, it's nothing compared to email, right? And, and, and even that would be nothing compared to like, phone calls, okay? So the, the way the world talks isn't yet through geospatial browsers, not yet. But when I look at the growth rates of the internet, which is unprecedented among everything before that, except those like window Garfield stickers and baby on board stickers. Those were extremely fast, but they didn't last, right? But uh, the GeoWeb's maybe five or six years behind in the same, same acceptance rate. So it's quite interesting because I imagine five years from now, you know, the, you know, our kind of numbers, Microsoft Virtual Earth and Google Earth and all these things will be in the same, you know, another factor of 10. That bodes well for people who build businesses based on that growing and not shrinking. I see no sign of it not continuing to grow. Okay. 